While you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. Yes, huh? Mm. I, I got trouble hearing you with that mask. I'm like, what? Oh, God! Give me that Romans. <laughs> Say it again. Rend your heart, not your garment. Give me that. Where's that at? Rend your heart, not your garment. Okay, Joel 2, thank you. Joel 2, give me that. Read it. You got it? You know what it is? Joel chapter 2, verse 13. And rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. So rend your heart and not your garments. What was the custom? Let me explain that to you. The Israelites, because that's what's talking, had a custom. If I was sad, we would tear our garments. We would rip our clothes just so everyone could see we're sad. But the Bible says rend what? Rend your heart. Your heart is your mind. Tear your, bring, tear your mind. Repent. That's what it's saying. Repent within and not your clothes. Don't tear your clothes. God wants you to tear your mind in uh, prayer. And repentance, that's what that means. Do you understand that, sis? Read it again. Rend your heart and not your garments. A lot of y'all use that to say it doesn't matter what you do or how you dress, but that's not what that means. Read it again. Rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God. Turn unto the Lord your God. So you have to turn to the Lord your God. You got to put down the thought. You can dress on your breast and your camel's toe. You got to say, no, I can't dress like this no more. You understand? Now, you was going to say something, young man. What was you going to say? What are you going to say? You better be in the spirit to this guy. She said, uh, oh, God, she said, as a parent, do as you please. Do as you please? No, no, no. He's right. You can't do that. You cannot tell a child, do as you please. You have to guide your children. Uh oh, oh. Your children, all of them, they're grown. The youngest one. Oh, the seven. You can, you can. That okay. Well, listen. Give me that Deuteronomy six and one. What are you supposed to teach your children? I'm gonna show you. Deuteronomy six. I want verse one. Then jump to seven. Get to the point. You have kids. You got children. You have brother. You got children. You take care of them. Where's the wife? With the woman. Because all the men say they take care of the kids, but when we see the wife, she goes, "It don't pay nothing. It don't do nothing for me." That's the women here and guy to be saying. Watch this. You hold your kids. 18, okay, they're big like your, your older ones. And yours are little. Right? Watch this. Deuteronomy 6, verse 1. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that you might teach them in the land whether ye go to possess it. So these are the commandments that you were commanded to keep. Now watch what verse 7 says. Verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. You got to teach the commandments diligently to your children. You have to teach your children how to dress modestly, not to dress like men. Those are just two basic commandments, right? Read again. And thou shalt teach them to thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. You sit in your house, you're supposed to speak the commandments to your children. And when thou walkest by the way, when you walk down the street with your children, te teach them the commandments. Give them examples of thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not. Who can explain thou shalt not commit adultery? Which one of you two can explain thou shalt not commit adultery? I'm just curious. You? No? Will you? They can't. Give, give me that Deuteronomy about adultery. Uh, is it 21, 21, something like that? What is adultery? It's when. Is it 22, 22? Adultery is when you um, come outside of marriage and um, cheat, outside of marriage. Ah, uh, cheat. He's very good there. I like this guy right here. He all right. But I don't think you obey this stuff. But we just, you just talk a You know, these guys out here be talking, but they ain't no doing nothing. Hey, sister, turn back around. This is good. This is good. Deuteronomy 22, verse 22. If a man be found lying with a woman, Married to an husband. So if he be found having sex with a woman, and he she has a husband that's not married with him, then they shall both of them 
die. He shall both of them die. Both the men that lay with the woman. Why you got your face? That's why look, look. Something going on in the spirit right here. Something going on in the spirit. Read it again. Then you can testify in a minute. Come on. If a man be found lying with a woman married to an husband, then they shall both of them die. Both the man that lay with the woman and the woman. So shalt thou put away evil from Israel. Because it's evil. If my wife is to have sex with him and his wife has sex with me and you have you married, have sex with this guy and then you're married and you have sex with this guy. Yes, ma'am. She called me young man. I love that thing. Go ahead. What do you want to say? People do things not because they want to, but because of the situation that might be in. So, I want you to give me an example so I understand. Okay, say it again. I'm going to try it. If you know, you help me. People do things not because they want to, but because of the situation that they Okay, people do things not because they want to. Okay, let me ask you this. Are you referring to situations like rape? Okay, it's not rape. That's the only thing I can think of. You know what she's talking about? He beats her. A better man, or I see a better woman. Right. So it's not something that I want to do, is it? So don't judge. Okay, okay, I think I understand. Sleeping around, what? Go ahead, continue the sentence. Sleeping around is not a choice. Sleeping around is not a choice. I'm still trying. I'm still trying to understand. You understand what she's saying? So she's saying if you plan to marry her, right, and then he decides to go, and you got to choose someone else. Okay. Oh, what's the solution for that then? Should you be having sex with him before you get married? Yes or no? Well, it's yes or no. man that you gotta marry me. What? Hey, keep your legs closed. Bring it out. Keep your legs closed. You, you have a, you have ability to tell the man what. You can say no. I'm not having sex with you. So when you're courting a man, when you're court, let's say you like this man. Can I get him? Go ahead. Say it again. Yes. Yes. But when it's time That's why you're supposed to get married first. When let's I'm gonna give an example. I know I'm gonna give an example. You like him, he likes you. You gotta get to know him. Give me that it's Sirach uh, 69. About proof that one. I'll get I wanna I just gotta read this. I gotta read this first. Ecclesiasticus chapter 6, seven. 7. Sirach chapter 6, verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend, you would get a friend like you might want him to be a friend of yours. Prove him first. Prove him first. And be not hasty to credit him. Don't be hasty to credit him. Oh, he said he's going to marry me next year. He's going to marry you. Uh -huh. You got to prove him. You got to get to know his personality. Is he a liar? Is he a thief? That takes years sometimes. So during that time, you should not be in the bed with him at all. Ecclesiastes 42.10. You should not lay down. And that's the mistake a lot of you sisters and Guyana make. You have sex first, then you find out the man's a bum because he wants somebody else. And Hebrews 13 and 4. Sirach 42 verse 10. In her virginity, lest she be defiled and gotten with child in her father's house. Some of you have sex with boys and you still live at home with mommy and daddy. The Bible says you are defiled like that because the man has not married you yet. But you got a baby. Hebrews 13, 4, please. You understand, young man? You understand. I see you got a lot in your spirit because you keep putting your head down, you're looking. There's a lot going on in your spirit. Huh? Oh, you're oh, you searching for more questions. Hebrews 13, 4. Hebrews 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. Marriage is honorable. You're supposed to get married first before you have children. And the bed undefiled. Bed undefiled. But whoremonger? A whoremonger is someone that has sex outside of marriage. You're not married, but you have sex and babies. 
and adulterer. And adulterers, as we just finished discussing before, you get married and want to have sex outside the marriage. God will judge. God will judge you. How does God judge whoremongers and adulterers? Come here, man, young man. How does God judge? Are you a whoremonger? Do you know what a whoremonger is? Explain a whoremonger. I'm a man that sleeps around. Okay, how does God judge a man that sleeps around? He, he makes a decision to, um, to destroy him if he don't repent. If, how would he destroy him? How? Like if he has, like if you get a, a sexual transmitted disease. Oh, I like this guy right here. Just give me that dude on me 286. I, see, I, I like you. Now, if you find it, if you lying and you notice something, you're not obeying it, you're going to get it. Read this. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28, verse 61. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law. Connery is not written in here. Syphilis, AIDS, HIV, yeast infection, uh, herpes. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law. Then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. That's why he and God, a lot of you women and some of you men, you get disease, sexually transmitted diseases because you're not obeying the laws of God, okay? And you said not to judge. You said not to judge, right? Give me the, give me the woman that was caught in adultery in John 8. John 8. John 8, we're gonna start at verse four. There was a woman caught having sex. Don't run. Don't, who's, blowing, who's blowing the horn? That's about to get, what? Wait, you said don't judge. I'm gonna show you what Christ said about that. Watch, just give me a moment. Okay, one second. John 8, verse four. They say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in the in the adultery in the very act. So they snatched the woman up. She was, you know what the very act means? She was getting busy with the man. They snatched her up off the man. Go ahead. Now Moses in the Lord commanded us that such should be stoned. Such should be put to death for adultery. But what sayest thou? What do you say, Christ? This they said tempted him that they might have to accuse him. They wanted to accuse Christ of breaking the law of Moses, right? But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground. So he started to write on the ground in the sand. As though he heard them not. Like he, he was ignoring them. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first, let him first cast a stone. Everybody knows that. He that is without sin, let him first cast the first stone. Like she just quoted, she know that. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. So they all left. But watch this. But you all stop right there. In church you stop there, but you gotta read on. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself, he saw none but the woman. He said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Where is your accuser? Here you come. Hath no man condemned thee? Hath no man condemned thee. So what was the condemning? He wanted to do what to her? Stone her, kill her. That's the condemnation. She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. What does that book mean? Go and sin no more. Don't do it again. What's, what does sin mean? What does sin mean? What is sin mean? When you're doing the wrong, what you got? What you got? Right. Here's what sin means. First John. Read. Four, three. First John three, verse four. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Does the church teach all that? That's what sin is, transgressing God's laws. Oh, you don't go to church. What about you? Good, I'm glad you don't go to church. You need to come join us. Only I need to come join us. So listen, sin is breaking God's law. Okay, so you've got to know God's law in order to know if you're a sinner or not. Like we read today, the brother read, a woman wearing pants is what? A sin, right? Like right now, your zipper is open, sis. Zip it up, zip it up. I just happened to look down. What's wrong? Oh, you're pregnant, so that's why, the, that's why you gotta wear a skirt, sis, a dress. I see a woman walk, her pants is open. I'm like, what the hell's going on down here? One day I might see a bush. I'm like, what the hell, you gotta cover this stuff up. That's what you gotta do, cover up your butt. 
Now, we also read about modesty, right? Modest apparel. Now, is this modest? I see your breast. Is that modest? That's all my question. It's not modest. When she walked down the block, all she's going to hear You know that's what you're going to hear. Right, sis? Am I right? And what was you going to say? Say it again without the mask. It's hard for me to understand. They are clothed, but yet still naked. Yes, you're here with the brother saying, and that's why many women say men don't respect the woman. Y'all yeah, gotta first respect yourself. Bring it out. Am I right or wrong? Right here. That's correct. You see that? Respect yourself. That's right. Once you respect, it, once you respect yourself, then people can respect you. Oh, that's some heavy, that's Bible right there. That's some good stuff right there. Right? You agree with what he said? Let me ask the women. Do y'all agree with what this brother just said? She didn't give a yes or no. Do you agree with what he said? Do you agree with what he said? Now you said you respect yourself. Do you look at her? Look at the way she dressed. Do you think she respect herself? If you said you respect yourself, right? Why are you dressing like that? You hear what he said? Yeah. Okay. She wanna represent E. She. What? Okay. But you, go, what are you gonna say before I say it? What type of respect you talking about? Uh -oh. What kind of respect you talking about? All the respect. So do you think men respect you? Yeah, yeah. Don't go with that. No, but you, they should. So let me ask you this. The other day, a woman got raped. Uh, where was that place a woman got raped? Burries. Okay, she got raped. There's rape going on out here. Yeah. Do you think it's the women that cover their bodies up that are getting raped? Or do you think it's the women that flaunt their bodies that are getting raped? No, I want you to be honest. Because you have children. Whatever you say, them children want to grow up with the same thought. No? No what? Okay, my question, my first question was, what was my question? I done forgot what I said. Oh, the one that's getting raped. Do you think it's the woman that cover up or the woman that's flaunting their body? Let me ask her. See, what do you think? I always say that they call the dress like that. Pushing yourself like that to, to get like, like you're okay, like temptation. It's like you, it's like the woman tempted the man to do that. You heard what he said? The brother's correct. Yes, ma'am. So, no, this is not about dressing. This is not about the men. This is about dressing. Okay? Um, even if the man has said nothing, he's going to look. So it's not about the man, it's about the way you dress and respect yourself. Simple. That's it. He's correct. He is correct. Yes, sir. If they dress properly, right? Naturally, as a human being, they, 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 they choose to respect themselves and they draw, they draw respect. You know, good, good. If you do good to yourself, you'll draw good. Everybody said if you do good, you're going to draw good. If you if your bait is your booty and your chest, you're gonna get men that's all they want. They're not gonna respect you. They're gonna have sex with you, but they're not gonna settle down, marry, you, take care of you. That's what's gonna I'm, We're men, we're, that's what we all telling you. Heavenly men here. Yes. That's true. We're not saying take every man. You gotta choose a man. A man like all of us can say we like you, right? Then you have to say, I gotta get to know one by who's who. You gotta, gotta get to know men. Some men come so good. Verse two. Verse two. Oh, she said something there. But there's signs. I'm just helping you out. If I'm talking to you, right? Let's say you're not married. I'm not married. I'm talking to you. I say, sister, you're beautiful. I'm gonna get to know you. Blah blah blah. Then she walks by, and, and, and as I'm talking to you, I turn and I'm just staring at her. You should spot that like this. This guy. Here I'm talking to this guy, he's looking over this next one. You wouldn't take it as nothing? Oh. 
okay? I'm, I'm telling you, it's the mistake right there. Because the man, is, if he's going to marry you honestly, he's, he's supposed to be focused towards you. If he's looking at this woman and that woman and these women over there, that letting you know my mind is not focused on you. What are you going to say? Tell me. Right now you're looking for a husband. I'll tell you a secret. Let's, I'm, I'll tell you, I'll speak for all these brothers here. You're looking for a husband, and if let's say I'm talking to you, and all I'm looking, my eyes are there. I never look up there in your face. I'm just right there and there. You should be able to go, you know what? This guy ain't right. That means you gotta cover, these are little signs you women gotta pick up on. And you're supposed to teach your daughters, these are signs you catch. That I've not been taught properly. Read that, watch this, because this is what you say. Surat 11 verse 2, commend not a man for his beauty. Commend not a man for his beauty, because like you said, some men come good. They handsome the way you want. Neither abhor a man for his outward appearance. You got other men that don't look so handsome, but the man that don't look so handsome might be the man that would do you right. Take care of you all your life. Take care of your kids. But you're looking at the handsome, who's the handsome guy in Guyana? Who's a famous star that's handsome out here? Who? Who? You don't care? She said him. He said the guy in the pink right there. He said him. That, that, the homemonger brother. He said him. So you, you see a guy like that. Oh, he's so handsome. But your homemonger, he got five women and six babies all over the place. He don't care. No, not you. Oh, five women and one baby in the side here. So when you meet a man like that, you say, how many, you got one woman of five babies, and he's talking to you to make you woman number two. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. That's what it means when we say you gotta prove a man first. Get to know him, and it takes years. It don't take a week. Right, am, I, am I right or wrong? Right or wrong? It takes time. But not only that, I believe, I say, because I grew up with my grandparents, grew up in a Christian home, right? I believe once, Right? The man and the woman should be contented once you have a contented heart. Right? Because mostly, there are some men and women doesn't be contented. Doesn't be contented once you have to be have a contented heart. Yes. I'm going to show you that in the Bible. Listen good to this. Come on. Page 16. Tobit 8 verse 7. Oh, Listen good to this. You a husband. Know. Watch this. And now, O oh Lord, I take not this my sister for lust. Oh Lord, I take not my sister for lust. You know what lust means? What's lust? Lust is lust is like looking at that. That is lust. What are you gonna say, young man? Looking at the woman sexually, sexually. Whoa, she looks good. That's lust. And meaning what? And that lust, he don't want to marry you. He just wants to sex you. That's us. Read it again. And now, O oh Lord, I take not this my sister for lust, but uprightly. But uprightly. Therefore, mercifully ordain that we may become aged together. Aged together. That's what he was saying. Be contented. Be aged. You want a man that's going to grow old with you. That's what you want. You don't want a one night stand, sis. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're tired of that. We got a different man every day of the week. What the hell is this? You don't want that. That's not a lot. I'm not saying you. I'm just hypothetical, right? You, nobody want to live like that. Okay, hey, close us out because we got to hit the road. Close us out. Hey, give me a notice. Come to school. Anybody have a plan? Anybody have a plan? You have a plan? You have a plan? All right. The contact number. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is 